back to Sheila Bobby Handmade. My name is Caitlin, known just about everywhere on the internet as Sheila Bobby, and today is my podcast. Um, and fun fact, today is actually the one year anniversary of the podcast. I'm actually recording this on August 11th, which I think it means you will see it on the 14th. And the last, the last time, the first time that I posted a podcast was on the 17th of August um, last year. So it is our one year anniversary. Yay! <laughs> um, so because it is our one year anniversary, I do have a very special giveaway that I will discuss at the end of the episode. So please stick around to find out about that. Um, but yeah, other than the excitement of a one year anniversary, I have a couple of finished objects to talk to you about and some works in progress and a lots of acquisitions um we'll talk about it when we get there um yeah so let's get started with finished objects so the first finished object that i have is my forest trail socks um this is one that you saw in the last episode i had just started the texture and i said i didn't really know how the texture would work out um in the variegated yarn um, but it actually turned out really, really nice. I am super excited about these. Um, so this is the Forest Trail Pattern by Barbara Steinglitz is probably how I would say that. Also, I'm sorry if you hear or see a fly. There is one in here. Uh, I forgot to mention also that <laughs> I have my air conditioner on again today. Um, it is very hot, very humid, and so I am going to have to have the air conditioner on. I apologize. That is why we are also hair up girly today because it is hot and humid and so we are we are we are keeping it cool with an air conditioner but anyway this is the Barbara Stein glitz pattern that was in the 52 weeks of socks volume 2 pattern pattern book from Lina magazine um and yeah it was a fun pattern by the time I was on the second sock I was like I am done doing cables um but it is it was a fun pattern I would recommend it definitely um, the yarn is the, um, Rio Grande or Grand River Gorge by Long Dog Yarn in her Merino sock base. Um, I think this one, let me see, it's actually in this bag. I'm currently working on the leftovers. Yeah, so this one has the biogra biodegradable nylon, um, 8515. Yes. 8515. So this one has her new biodegradable nylon um, base. Um, this was my 13th Summer Sock Camp finish. Uh, these are for my sister as all of the Yarn of Enchantment yarns are. If you don't know what the Yarn of Enchantment yarns are, Long Dog Yarn. She is putting out, um, giving out a mystery but like an inspired by club. Um, every month and I have signed up for all I believe it's 12 months um, I've signed up for all 12 and all 12 of the socks I am making my sister a patterned or textured sock with them um, I'll use the leftovers to make myself a pair of socks if I want to which I am with these because I love this colorway um, but yeah so she's getting that um, these are on 64 stitches and some dates are July 24th to August 4th was when this was on the needles. And I do have both of them here. Um, also just some general information since today um, I have socks on different size needles and different types of needles. Typically if I do not mention my needle size or method, I usually default to US 1 2.25 millimeter needles and I use Magic Loop. Um, that's my default. That's what I typically use for my socks. However, there are some times that that variates and I will try to notate that when they come up. Um, I think that is all for this sock. Um, like I said, love the yarn. I always love long dog yarn. You will see some more of her today. I always love long dog yarns yarn. She gets me for um, blues and greens. And today I am in a very blue green era. Uh, with my socks both finished and works in progress so um, yes so that was my first finished object um, just some details that I found interesting about this pattern is the way that you work it um, it's a one by one twisted rib cuff and you can't really see it with this particular um, you might can see it on 
this side I'll try and show that on the close-up um, but you work a couple of rows in the main color and the contrast color in the in the cuff so you have like a little bit of a detail there and my brain had a hard time working this pattern the first sock because you work it that you work the leg in a pattern repeat over and over again but then when you get to the past the gusset decreases or when you start the deck when you start the heel flap you move some of your stitches around and then you knit it in a different pattern repeat that's the same but shifted and then when you get to the toe you have to shift some more stitches and so my brain was not all for switching stitches but anyway definitely recommend this pattern i don't know if you can get it yet um freestanding um i knit it from the the 52 weeks of socks book so i don't know if it is possible to get that um outside of that book yet but if not then it will be soon because usually it's about a year or a year and a half after the book release my second uh finished object and these are big on my blockers i need to get some larger um some larger blockers um, these are my second finished object for this week I only have two um, pairs of socks to show you for finished objects these are what I called my eight days a week socks because that is the colorway name this is eight days a week by Ba yarns um, it is their footloose base and this is the eight days a week colorway in the shadow which means the darker color um, is more prominent than the lighter color um, this is a assigned pooling yarn I didn't use it for that but that is why it has like the shadow or the light version um, because they just swapped those out um it is just my vanilla sock however these are for a friend of mine and they are 72 stitches and I knit them on US 1.5 2.5 millimeter needles the reason why I do that is my gauge doesn't vary a whole lot when I'm knitting the actual socks however um I have to have specific stitch counts or needle size to be able to fit a sock on someone's foot. Um, so usually when I am making um, socks for men um, who typically have a larger foot than a female, um, I have to go up to a 1.5 to make sure that the, the fit will work or I have to cast on more stitches and nobody wants to work more stitches. So I just go up and do 72 stitches. Um, so that is that it is just a typical two by two rib cuff length of foot I don't even remember what I did probably 20 25 on this one hit heel flap and gusset I do not have a vanilla pattern that I can reference you for this particular sock because I um, adapted my pattern from the crazy sock ladies vanilla sock um, pattern along with just socks that I have knit over the years and making my preference and my perfect fit socks for my preferred recipe but if you want something close enough a vanilla sock from the crazy sock lady would work um I cast these on July 24th and finished them July uh, August 10th which was yesterday for me um 72 stitches I already told you that 14th summer sock camp pair of socks completed I need to take pictures of these and actually post them because I haven't done that yet since I finished them yesterday. Um, that's all for finished objects. Um, let's get right on into works in progress. So as I mentioned, I finished the eight days a week socks uh, yesterday and so then I didn't have any socks on the go. So I had a little cast on party yesterday and I cast on three pairs of socks. Before we get into the socks, I do want to just mention my blanket because I have worked on it, but I'm only showing it every other episode. So that blanket pattern is the Ocean Waves Blanket by Lauren Brown. If you want to see details about that, you can see the link below. I have a Ravelry link um, and you can check that out if you would like to. Um, otherwise, it'll be shown on the next episode because um, I'm just working on it on the weekends right now until summer sock camp is over and then I'll focus more on it because it needs to be done by the end of November um, and I'm about a third of the way through the blanket so just wanted to mention that that is still being worked on that is still in existence it's just not being shown today um, all right so the first sock that I cast on yesterday is in my fat squirrel speaks um, fat squirrel fibers bag my typical ghosty purple bag love this bag um and inside of here i'm using the leftovers of the 
um, Rio Grande River Gorge and I am using a different mini because I used just about all of the mini for the other sock. I didn't have enough to make myself one. So this is actually another long dog yarn. Um, several years ago, my friend Rezzy, he purchased me the um, mini set for the collection that she had it right now, right then, which was the villain collection, if I'm not mistaken. I think this one is the flotsam and jetsam um, colorway from The Little Mermaid unsure if that is correct but that is where this mini came from was from that collection or it came from the one club to rule them all or one collection one collection to rule them all um from the lord of the rings so i'm not exactly sure which colorway this is but it is from long dog yarn so i'm using it in this sock and i am making socks for myself these are on nine inch circulars so this is a little bit of a deviation from my normal i don't know why i had a there's a fly <laughs> i had a overwhelming urge to knit on nine inch circulars and see just if i knit faster or just to experience it so i cast them on when i do nine inch circulars i have to go up to a 1.5 because my tension tightens greatly um, the first time I did socks on 9 inch circulars, um, I made them for myself, 72 stitches, and I could not wear them. So they went to my sister. Um, so went up a size, so this is US 1.5, 2.5 millimeters. Um, I'm doing 68 stitches. I'm using the contrast color for the cuff and the toe, and then the main color um, for the leg. This sock is ready for a heel flap. Um, so I stopped there last night so that I could work on the heel flap. That's something I like to do on 9 inch circulars at one time. I keep my heel flap um, on the 9 inch circulars, but I will switch to a um, magic loop needle when I do the toe. But that is where I am on those. Nothing too exciting, just some vanilla socks for myself with the leftovers because I loved that color. Um, so, yeah that is that sorry I don't typically um, zip those up so that it doesn't go in the microphone so I apologize if that was loud um all right the next pair of socks I'm not going to show you the, the bag because it is in part of it is part of my acquisition so I'm not going to show you that just yet but I will show you what is inside of it so this pair of socks is the Billy the Kid um, yarn of enchantment which was the May colorway and this is on her 8515 before she switched to the biodegradable. And I've said it before, if you feel this yarn and you feel the biodegradable yarn, there's no like feel difference. They're just as soft and just as amazing. Um, this one has a gray contrast color and then this beautiful green color um, as the main color. The actual sock, here it is. These are the Titty Gaga socks um, by Nancy Wheeler. I purchased this pattern. I can't remember. I think it was in January or February of this year. Um, she released a pattern last year, which I can't remember the name of them, but for the same reason for breast cancer research and the proceeds of the first month of the sock pattern being out goes to breast cancer research. So I purchased this during that time. Um, these are, oops, I forgot to say the um Rio Grande River socks for myself are my 15th pair of summer sock camp socks um these are my 16th pair again these are going to be for my sister because they are the yarn of enchantment and I am really loving <laughs> this yarn combination with the pattern my stitch marker here is part of acquisitions, but I obviously am not going to take it off just to hide it until then. So this is part of the acquisitions. It comes with the bag, so I will let you know about that as well in acquisitions. Um, 64 stitches, Magic Loop, US1, the typical. Um, and I'm in doing it to pattern. So I'm doing the one by one um, cuff and then the pattern as written. I think that's all of the fun stuff there. These are fun. Um, I'm doing those again. I cast these on last night and got up to that point and um, then I decided to cast these on. 
when I say that I casted these on, I literally cast on half of the stitches <laughs> and then I was like, I'm too tired to continue. So I technically cast them on last night, but I did not actually start them until this morning. Um, this bag is by my friend Karen and I still have yet to ask her because I haven't seen her yet. But I don't think that she's selling these on her own. She was selling them at our local yarn shop before they closed their brick and mortar. So I don't know if they're going to sell them in that shop. But if they do, then I will link them at that point. But it is just a cute little bucket bag. And I put this carabiner on there so I can clip it to like my backpack or different stuff. The little thing in the car where you um, can hang hangers. This is really good to go there door handles all that sort of stuff so that's i just keep it on there so you may hear it clank i will try to keep it from doing so in here i am making friends friends i'm making socks for another friend um resi you've heard of him several times here on the podcast and i'm calling these my mustard and ketchup socks and you will see why um but this is trekking xxl in the colorway 721 it doesn't have a word uh colorway in here we have a teeny tiny little sock. Um, so I started these again last night, did half the cast on and then needed to go to bed. So I finished the cast on and worked a bit on the sock. These I'm doing a little bit different. Um, I'm experimenting with no cuff. So these are going to be three by one rib socks all the way through. Um, except for the sole of the foot. I will keep that stockinette. But just experimenting with that and seeing how uh, he likes that fit because he has several socks from me. But the yarn is, looks like ketchup and mustard. My niece said also a little bit of mayonnaise and maybe a bun. So <laughs> maybe it's a hot dog sock. And when I said that, she said, do you put mayonnaise on hot dogs? And I said, well, I personally don't, but I have heard where people put mayonnaise on on socks. Could be cheese. Who knows? But anyway, just to start on this, just a couple of rounds to get going. Again, this is on US 1.5's 2.5 millimeter needles, and I'm doing the magic loop because they are for a male foot. Those are my 17th summer sock camp socks, and I don't know if I'll have too many after that. My goal for summer sock camp was 30 socks, um, but life got extremely busy this summer. Um, one, we got chickens and that wasn't really, like it was on the schedule to get them, but I just didn't realize how much time they were going to take to take care of and prepare space for them. So that cuts into my knitting time, uh, obviously. So I didn't quite meet my 30 pair goal, I believe. I mean, unless I can whip out 12 pairs of socks in the next you know, three weeks, which I do not think that that's going to happen. Um, I'll probably get close to 20, but, um, I have already beaten myself, um, at 14 pairs of socks last year. So I'm currently at 14, but I will definitely finish another pair in the next three weeks. So I know that I will at least beat my record from last year and we'll try again next year to see how that is. But yes, the chickens, and taking care of them have taken up quite a bit of my free time and I am enjoying the chickens and loving them so um, it is not a bad thing for sure um, they have brought a lot of joy to my life too so not too upset about that and once it cools down a little bit I'll be able to like sit out there with them um, when I'm spending time with them and be able to knit at the same time so it'll all work out um, just didn't quite meet my my summer sock camp goal for this year, which was a crazy goal anyway. 30 pairs of socks. That's crazy. It's fine though. We will live. All right, so now we're gonna move on to acquisitions. And I have quite a bit to go through today. Um, so buckle up, get ready. Um, first, I'm gonna go through my Yarnable for this month. If you have not received your Yarnable yet, it is the 11th of August, so you should have received it. But just in case you haven't, you may want to look away for a few minutes while I show the Yarnable. Um, the extras that we got are this really cool wooden ruler. And it changes colors. And it's so hot that it is changing pretty quickly in my room. It You would have to hold your hand on it quite a bit. So it's a purple. And then when you put your hand on it, it changes to a bright pink. 
Um, I think I'm redoing my room over the next couple of weekends and I think I'm gonna have this on display. Um, it says warning use, 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 use may result in extreme crafting. Um, so yeah, that is one of the extras. And then the next extra that was in here we already used <laughs> is these um, mosquito um, itch relief patches. I have to ask Kate how they worked. I put one on her. Um, they're not medicated. They're just like a little thin band-aid um, that are supposed to help keep you from scratching them. So I don't know how these worked. She's the only one who has used them so far, but you get 12 patches in there and they're just like little tiny squares. The next thing, Kate, if you just happen to be watching, click off the video. You can, you, you don't need to see the rest. <laughs> you've, you've seen the yarn. You were just in here. Um, but this is for you, so I want you not to know about it. So, goodbye. <laughs> um, so, I am doing something special for my niece, just in case she is sticking around. I'm doing something special for my niece for Christmas. And I'm going to include this in her special thing. Um, but this came with it, which is a little rubber ducky zipper pull or keychain. And so, she loves these little tiny rubber duckies. Um, she has a pack of like a thousand of them. They did this big thing in her school. Um, over the last like week of school where you could find these little rubber duckies all over the school. She has a collection of them. Um, she has stitch markers and stitch stoppers and things that are little rubber duckies. So I'm going to give this to her in her little special Christmas thing. Which when it gets closer to Christmas maybe in um, Vlogmas which I'm still planning on doing this year. I will go over exactly what that gift is. Um, and now the yarn. So happy with this yarn. So, <laughs> this is the colorway. It is called Neon Graffiti, and I cannot wait to cast this on. It is going directly into my pile to wind up for the next round of socks and things that I make. Because even though Summer Sock Camp is ending in a couple of weeks, that doesn't mean I'm going to stop making socks. That just means I'm not going to be only making socks. Um, we'll talk about that here in a bit as well. But... This is an amazing colorway. It is going to be cast on soon. Soon, soon, soon. Um, so that is the yarnable. I'm going to toss this in my bucket over here so that it's ready to go. Um, the next thing, and I did not text my friend to ask her if it was okay to say her name or if she wanted it, her name to be known. So I'm not going to say it, but you know who you are. Thank you. My friend, and I put this in... It was supposed to be in the last episode, but I put it in the pile for the next winding of yarn and did not think to put it in the podcast. So my apologies. This one is a little bit later, but this is a scanny yard that my friend sent me as a gift. Um, she is the sweetest human ever, and I love this yarn. It is um, cas cashmere and coconuts hand-dyed yarn. I've never seen this hand-dyed yarn um, before or this company before, so I'm going to have to cashmere. No, just cashmere. Why does it say cashmere? Oh, the E looks like an I on the front. It is cashmereandcoconuts.com. Um, this is her MCN base, which is merino cashmere nylon, and this is her colorway beach bums. So soft, ready to be socks. So this was already in the cast on pile, wind up pile for the next time that I wind up yarn. So that I can make these socks. So this is going right back into that pile and ready to do that. But again, thank you. You know who you are. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Toss that in there. The next one is Simply Serving. So I got an order from Simply Serving. There is one other thing that I did not bring out here because it is, again, for my niece's special Christmas present. Again, I'll show you all that later. That just happened to be in Yarnable. That's why you get to see that. Well, this is from Simply Serving and I got some stitch markers. So you're definitely going to have to look at the close-up to see these. But this one is a teeny tiny little baked potato. <laughs> um, it's a potato with little chopped green onions and sour cream and butter. Nom, nom, nom. <laughs> do not eat your stitch, mark stitch markers. Do not do it. And then this one is a little um, like Debbie hostess cake or um, like a little Debbie or a hostess cake. The little chocolate cake cupcakes. So cute. So those can now go on my projects. They don't have to wait any longer. I can put them on some sacks. Um, that was Simply Serving. 
let's do long dog yarn next so today actually I got my pre-order from Long Dog Yarn. That is the Our Yarn Means Death or Our Flag Means Death collection. And I got three yarns. The first one is the only fingering weight one that I got. This is on her new um, 8515 Biodegradable. This is Calypso's Birthday. And it spoke to me. I have never seen Our Flag Means Death. It's on my list of things to watch eventually. Um, but cute purple love it adding that to the collection and then i got two dk weight yarns because i kind of went through a lot of my dk weight yarn during summer sock camp um making socks for my sister myself um my grandma and so i needed to restock a little bit and so i got these two so this one is talk talk it through as a crew um this is 100 percent superwash merino beautiful mauvey with hot pink speckles um lovely and then this one is your last act on this planet will be surrendering to a woman again 100 percent superwash merino wool and it's just a hot pink dark red maroon lovely also going to be socks of course um the last thing is my summer sock camp prize so back towards the beginning of july i actually was watching this this crazy sock ladies um, podcast and on her podcast she puts like a list of people who won from Ravelry and Instagram um, for the summer suck camp and I won a prize which is crazy I was so super excited I have participated for the last four years of summer sock camp including this year um, and you know I'm not in it for the prizes but I was super excited um, so my prize was from JM yarn crafts yarns and crafts and I got this chicken bag. So um, it was winner's choice of the bags that she had in her shop. And she had roosters and chickens. And I don't think she had any bunny ones. Um, but then she had some really cool like 80s, 90s, you know, the theme of, of summer sock camp. So this bag was one of the ones that she had in her shop. And so I sent her a picture of it and was like, that one. I need that one. Um, so yeah, that is the bag that my... Um, Billy the Kid uh, Titty Gaga socks are in and then she also included the little chicken stitch marker um, and some green light bulb markers of course the usual needed necessity for making socks is the little light bulb stitches so that was my final acquisition was this chicken bag and I absolutely love it um, it does have the handle on the side it is lined, so it's the same fabric on the inside. Um, no pockets or anything, but when you're making socks, you don't really need pockets. So it is just the perfect, like, soft, squishy, travel-friendly um, sock bag. All right. I think that is all that I have as far as podcast stuff. So now to the fun part. Not that the other stuff wasn't fun. But, as I mentioned in the beginning of the episode, this is technically my one-year anniversary episode. I began podcasting, uh, posted the first video on August 17th. So, this week is, this coming weekend, you're going to see this on the Wednesday, or at least it's coming out on the Wednesday. Um, so, the weekend that's following that is my one-year anniversary of the podcast. So, I want to give back to you guys. So, I appreciate you guys so much. You guys have, um, you know, brought joy to my life, you know, just knowing that I can share my, my projects and kind of have a little community there. I recognize a lot of you guys in the comments as you're commenting through. Even when I go to other podcasts, I see you guys commenting as well. I'm like, oh, I know you. Um, not personally, but like I've seen you around. That's awesome. Uh, so yeah, as a give back to you guys for celebration of my one year of podcasting I would like to do a giveaway so for this giveaway I would like to do a pattern of your choice um, so I it could be on Ravelry it can be on Etsy it can be anywhere where you like to purchase a pattern but I would like to give a digital pattern to you um, as a giveaway so how do you enter entering is simple make sure that you are a subscriber to the channel 
go ahead and click the like button. It's not required, but it will do a lot of good to the video and make sure that a lot of people are able to see this and also enter in on the giveaway. And then please write a comment and let me know your favorite thing to knit. Um, I'm gonna do just a random draw of the comments. So if you don't particularly want the pattern or anything like that, but you still want to comment, just say I'm not interested in the pattern or the, not interested in the giveaway, but here's my comment. Um, otherwise, everybody will be eligible for the particular pattern draw. I will draw it on my next episode. So in two weeks time, I will, when I'm recording, go ahead and do a draw, a draw of the winner here on the video and then we'll have the instructions on what to do then. So as a word of precaution, there are a lot of not so kind people who are trying to scam people. So please, please, please do not answer any comments if they say that they are me and need information because you won. I will not reach out to you in that way. Um, I will only tell you that you have won on a video and you will see your comment and your username. And I will give the instructions on how to reach out at that time. I will not ask you for any money. Is it a digital prize? I will sh send it to your Ravelry or I will send it to your email once it is purchased on my side. So you will not need to provide anything except for an email address when it is time. So please do not fall for any scams. You do not have to pay me. I do not need your shipping information. None of that. So keep yourself safe. Um, so I will draw that on there. Of course it is worldwide. That way um, that's the reason why I wanted to do a digital pattern is because I wanted to make sure that it is open for everyone who wants to knit. So it can be you know, socks or it can be sweaters, just whatever your favorite thing to knit is or crochet, make, whatever you want to make. Um, just let me know in a comment down below and I will randomly draw that com uh, that comment next time. All right, sorry, that was a little jumbly. It's my first time doing a giveaway, so trying to piece all of those things together. But anyway, I am all done for today. So I want to thank you, thank you, thank you so much for coming and hanging out with me. Thank you for making the last year enjoyable to knit and share my things with you guys here on YouTube. Um, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing so that you can see future videos. There are a lot of you here that have joined over the past year. So I thank each and every one of you. Give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.